powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Janelle Slade. Jay is off tonight. The story surrounding theft, gunshots, and a high-speed chase through Billings Monday night takes another turn in court today. Ryan McElmurray, the Wyoming man accused in what's described as 50 minutes of carnage, makes his first appearance in court today. And tonight, new video of just one of those crime scenes as the suspect literally drives a stolen vehicle through a business. Now, before she was done, the judge set McElmurray's bond at $1 million. Q2 Samantha Sullivan was in the courtroom this afternoon and has the latest on the charges and now more drama surrounding this case. Sammy. Janelle, 10 crime scenes, five car thefts, and an hour of chaos in Billings result in 12 felony charges for Ryan McElmurray. He's charged with counts of robbery with weapons enhancement, aggravated burglary, assault with a weapon, criminal endangerment, and felony theft. During the chase Monday night, shots were fired by officers and likely the suspect as well. Homes were broken into, cars were stolen, and multiple people were held at gunpoint. But more drama in court today. Billings and Missoula are both part of a new program through the state where information about offenders and their crimes is put into a computer and a recommendation to the judge on punishment is issued. In this case, the suggestion was that McElmurray was only a level one passive threat and he should be released on his own recognizance. The judge disagreed. I sincerely hope that this is a mistake as well. If not, uh, this is completely unacceptable. In fact, it's appalling um, that uh, the individuals who presumably have the best information to assess an offender's risk would recommend a release of uh, OR in a case like this. So I am going to deviate from the um, PSA that was prepared in this matter is wholly, wholly inaccurate and inappropriate. Janelle, as you mentioned, Judge Walker set bond at $1 million. McElmurray is set to appear in court again next week. Thanks so much, Sammy. Now a closer look at a few of those crimes unfolding. This surveillance video captured in the area of 350 South Billings Boulevard shows the suspect first shooting out a window, and then he climbs into the warehouse. About one minute later, as police arrive on scene to search that area, you can see a Ford truck bust through a garage door, back out, and take off. For specific details on this string of crimes, you can head to KTVQ.com. A Billings man who died this morning after he crashed his Lamborghini into a parked semi-truck is now identified. Authorities say 68-year-old Jim McCall was traveling at a high rate of speed when his green Lamborghini slammed into a power pole and the semi. This was the scene just before 8 o'clock this morning on King Avenue West near South 18th Street West. After fire crews extricated McCall from the car, he was rushed to the hospital where he died a short time later. The 32-year-old driver of the semi was asleep inside the cab when the sports car crashed into him. The semi driver was not injured. A massive cleanup is now underway tonight in Columbus after a coal train derailed late last night. But despite the spill, trains are still moving across Montana tonight. Take a look as crews collapse train cars into rubble, separating the coal in the process. This, according to officials with Montana Rail Rink, is how crews clean up the mess. It happened last night around 11 o'clock when about 40 cars derailed. No roads are closed in that area and trains are being rerouted through the High Line. As for environmental concerns, some coal did spill into a stream of the Yellowstone River. Now that cleanup should last until sometime Thursday. As for what caused the derailment, MRL officials say they just don't know yet. The Roberts High School boys basketball coach has officially resigned as he faces misdemeanor charges against him for allegedly kissing a 15 year old female student. Superintendent Alex Ader read the letter of resignation tonight from John Payovich. The Roberts School Board accepted the resignation without any discussion. In August, the Carbon County Attorney's Office charged Payovich with a misdemeanor crime of endangering the welfare of a child. Prosecutor State Payovich kissed the girl in December 2017 and again in January 2018, something Payovich denies. Now, tonight, Ader talked with us about what the resignation means for the small town of Roberts. Everybody's a cousin, everybody's a brother, everybody's an aunt, everybody's an uncle of both sides of this. And it's very difficult for our community. But hopefully now we can move onward and forward and 
we can put what has been a pretty rough eight months for a lot of people behind us. And Ader tells us the most important thing now is for the school to help meet the students' emotional and educational needs. He expects to hire a new coach before the start of the basketball season. The sexual misconduct allegations against Brett Kavanaugh keep piling up. As of tonight, a total of five women have claimed the Supreme Court nominee sexually assaulted or otherwise behaved inappropriately towards them. CBS's Nicole Killian reports from Capitol Hill. President Trump says Democrats are orchestrating a smear campaign against Brett Kavanaugh. They're actually con artists because they know how quality this man is and they've destroyed a man's reputation and they want to destroy it even more. However, Mr. Trump insists he's keeping an open mind about the charges being leveled at Judge Kavanaugh and the claims of his accuser. I'm going to see what's said. So it's, it's possible that they will be convincing. On the eve of a Senate hearing into alleged sexual misconduct by the Supreme Court nominee, there are two new anonymous claims, according to transcripts released by the Senate Judiciary Committee. One allegedly occurred outside a Washington, D.C. bar in 1998, the other on a boat in Rhode Island in 1985. Kavanaugh has denied all of the claims. He said the latest accusations are, quote, from the twilight zone. The White House dismissed the allegations as anonymous and untrue. Much of the country is expected to be tuned in Thursday when Kavanaugh and his first accuser, Christine Blasey Ford, tell their stories on Capitol Hill. In her submitted testimony, Ford says, quote, I have been accused of acting out of partisan political motives. Those who say that do not know me. I am a fiercely independent person and I am no one's pawn. Ford's lawyer says she took a lie detector test last month. A former FBI agent found her responses about the alleged high school groping incident were not indicative of deception. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Now, tomorrow's hearing is scheduled to get underway at 10 a.m. That's 8 a.m. here in Montana. On the weather scene tonight, Bob, the weather's a changing. Well, we know it's going to get a little bit cooler next week. We've been talking about a little mm -hmm. rain and then snow, but what about the week after that? That's what we're going to take a look at. Uh, the days 8 to 14 over here, October 3rd, right on through the 9th. And as you see here, we are looking at some cold air dropping down from Canada. Goes all the way down towards Nebraska. Here in Montana, it's going to get significantly colder here. And then what about precipitation? Well, it looks like it's going to be a little bit wetter than normal. We are going to be looking at some more rain moving in. Possibly, if it's cold enough, that rain will be changing to mixing with or turning to all snow October 3rd through the 9th of uh, next month. Obviously, it's going to be an interesting first full week of October. We'll have a little short term forecast coming your way in a few more minutes, you know. All right. Thanks so much, Bob. Well, one of the top races on the Montana ballot this year is the contest for the state's only U.S. House seat. MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison is giving us a closer look this week at those candidates. Tonight, he focuses on Democratic challenger Kathleen Williams. Kathleen Williams won a close, somewhat unexpected victory in a six-way primary in June to become the Democratic nominee against Republican incumbent Greg Gianforte. Now, Williams hopes to spring another upset in a race that Democrats haven't won in 24 years. The former state legislator from Bozeman says her experience in working across the political aisle on a full range of issues is what voters are looking for. I think it's the right time for the right candidate. I think it's a combination of the experience, the temperament, the policies that I'm talking about and the proposals and the contrast with, of those with uh, our current representative. As a state lawmaker, Williams sponsored bills that led to insurers covering the cost of cancer patients undergoing clinical trials and to enable more local retail food producers. My approach has always been to talk to as many people that I am going to be representing as possible and and get a sense of what they care about, what they're concerned about, and then roll up my sleeves and go get things done. The 57-year-old Williams grew up in California and moved to Montana in the mid-1990s. She has degrees in resource and recreation management and most recently worked as associate director for a nonprofit group of conservation-minded farmers and ranchers in the West. On the campaign trail, Williams has been traveling the state, visiting towns large and small, and talking a lot about health care. She wants to build on the Affordable Care Act by bolstering the private individual health insurance market and expanding Medicare, and says Gianforte and the Republicans just want to tear it down. And he used to talk about repeal and replace, but there's just nothing that's coming forward to replace. I think we need to fix the system, not just pick it apart bone by bone. 
When asked if she supports President Trump and his agenda, Williams says she'll work with Trump on things like bringing businesses back from overseas, but that she's running against Gianforte, not the president. We also have a third candidate in this race, Libertarian Eleanor Swanson, a lawyer from Billings. We'll tell you more about her tomorrow. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Thanks, Mike. Now, the three candidates for U.S. House will square off in their first public debate this Saturday evening. That debate televised live on MTN stations all across the state. Coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news, a data breach is of Uber drivers is driving up the cash for affected states. Check out how much Montana will get. And later, we'll hear from our very own Jay Cohn as he takes a tour through history. And later in sports, high stakes team roping right now at Metro Park. Scott catches up with Clay and Travis Tryon. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.